Welcome. Thank you everyone for joining our session today. I um, hope you're having a wonderful CMX day two. Um, I'm Ahmed Goyli. I'm Senior Support Specialist for Hybrid here based in New York City. It is 1 p.m. for me, but it is 7 p.m. for Jean, our CEO, who will be joining me today to answer some questions. Um, so feel free to grab a drink and enjoy happy hour if you are in the European time zone. I will be um, sipping on my water periodically, um, but I'll maybe have a drink later tonight. Um, I'm well, looking forward to getting your perspective on Hive, right? Um, hearing your thoughts on the current state and future state of community management um, and getting some live questions from the audience. So without further ado, let's jump right in. And yes, David, this will be recorded. Um, so, John, as I mentioned, 7 p.m. for you in Paris. Are you having, do you have a drink in your hand? Oh, yeah, I do. I mean, um, you know, any day is a wine day in France. And um, <laughs> so I actually usually don't open any bottle on a, on a weekday, but... Uh, Special occasion. It was in the event description, so I guess I'll have to do it. So actually, oh man, twist your arm. <laughs> I have this beautiful uh, bottle of uh, a French wine that I will just open right now. So, oh, live demonstration. There we go. Hear the noise. Yes. Can... All right. Like satisfying pop. So let's go uh, and let's get started. What are you drinking? Cheers, everyone. So I'm, I'm actually drinking uh, again, like, I mean, I, I know it's uh, it's no time for product placement here. Um, <laughs> it's morning for most of you guys. Uh, but again, I was pressured by the event description. So it's a French wine from uh, from south of France. Uh, it's called Les Pampres. It's um, it's actually um, not too far from Montpellier, uh, if some of you guys uh, know, in the Languedoc region. And so these winemakers are amazing because they they, they really take care of the soil and, and try to not use too much machinery. Um, it's, um, you know, and they kept, they keep the wine barrels that come from Burgundy another region of France that you guys may know. Anyways, I know it's not the topic today, uh, but I would totally recommend that. Cool. All right. Well, yes, obviously no one is here for, for a wine discussion. Um, although I'm sure everyone would be super happy to in indulge in that. Um, but let's switch gears to, to the main topic of conversation. Um, obviously, uh, CEO of Hype, right? Um, first question I think that comes to mind is why did you start Hype, right? Um, what was the the motivating factor there? Yeah, so thanks everyone uh, for for attending the session. Um, yes. uh, so so yeah, the the story is you know it started in 2010, so that's more than 10 years ago. Um, we wanted to to equip communities uh, with a solution that would truly facilitate uh, opportunity sharing. So we, you know, at that time, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn were already very prevalent, right, in the in the in the in the world of communities or social media right which is not exactly the same thing as, as people know here um but what I, what was frustrating to me in a way is that you know it's part of some communities and alum communities and 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 that community i felt was full of opportunities and people willing to help people willing to invest people willing to start projects and so on but there was no real way uh to uh, capture these opportunities at one point in time so that's basically the 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 driving idea be, be behind hype right uh, so we started with alumni communities, um, you know, we got positive feedback, good word of mouth, um, and we expanded to other type of communities as people were asking us if they could use the platform for other uh, use cases. Um, and so, so we were forced to add flexibility to our product, which, you know, became a more and more flexible product, obviously, um, you know, and, and I mean, this is basically the story. I try to not keep it, uh, you know, too long. But, but another thing that really um, motivated me uh, and motivated us as, as a team in general is um, that, you know, online communities are bridging tech and people like no other industry, in my opinion. Right? Uh, it's it's very well balanced between technology and people, which is uh, amazing. I find on a daily basis. Uh, there's also a lot of variety uh, in that world of online communities um, that keeps expanding. Uh, you know, you never get bored. I mean, the, the product itself uh, is full of different modules and features. Then you have various types of communities and use cases. Uh, then you develop uh, and work with people, you know, within uh, the community, but also the ones driving the communities, the ones behind the community. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It's been a, an incredible uh, 10 years. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so I've only been here for, at the company for two years now, so and it feels like I've been here forever. Um, but I didn't realize that the idea actually started 10 years ago. When I think back 10 years, I was 2011, I was still in high school. Facebook was still like really the big thing at the time. I think people were probably still on MySpace at that time. Like yeah. it was a very different time. What was that journey like? 
It's uh, so I can confirm that it feels you've been around forever, uh, Ahmed. You're you're making a great impact <laughs> for us. Um, so uh, no, but like it's uh, it's been a it's been a long journey. Like to be honest, it's it's more than ten years. The five first years uh, were tough. I mean, you gotta you gotta imagine 2010 uh, in France. I mean, uh, the US is always uh, a bit a bit more advanced uh, when it comes to technology, SaaS, uh, also VC, uh, you know, investments and so on. So. In Paris, when we started uh, this in 2010, um, you know, we had to build a big product. I mean, the ambitious was to, to manage communities. Uh, so it's not like you do one little thing and you try to do it well. It's like you you have to do to build a collection of, of modules and features like events, managements, communications, directory data management, and so on. And and obviously you need capital. I mean, unless you're super rich, uh, which was not my case uh, at that time, and still is not the case. Um, you know, you basically um, you basically need money and funding and serious funding if you're going to do things right and and also compete with with others. Uh, but again, our motivation was really to to build that to do it right. And um, so so we we were looking for money, but people were telling us, I mean, hey guys, we we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn already. You know, what's this thing about you know communities? We we don't need that. And so you had to pitch, you had to demonstrate the need and evangelize almost and so on, which was the first uh, hurdle. Uh, the other thing is, is in general, the, 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 the VC world in Paris was not what it is today, right? And same in the US. I mean, it was a bit, a bit more advanced in the US. But, you know, uh, so, so anybody in Paris at that time who was raising a million uh, would be on TV all over the news and so on, right? Uh, today, I mean, a startup or like raising one million doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make the news mostly in general. So, so that was that was tough. Uh, the funding part was tough, the, um, but we got you know some some ambitious um, and 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 cool uh, business angels that joined the the the, 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 the whole thing, um, and you know like we, but we have lots of great memories from that time. I mean, uh, you know, we worked for a couple of years in cafes with our laptops, something that many of us uh, here did. Uh, for another two years, we worked in my little flat. Um, you know, I was basically folding my bed every morning, cleaning things as much as I could to make things extremely clean and, and have all the, the, the developers, the small team of developers, uh, you know, uh, come to the flat, to my flat for the, for the day. Um, and finally, one day we had our own office, uh, which was actually a garage in the middle of Paris uh, with no heat. <laughs> so anyways, it was, it was fun, a lot of fun, but quite tough in the, in the first years. Um, we actually thought of uh, giving up a few times, uh, but that's also something that's very specific to our industry that, you know, the fact that it's really all about people. When you think about it, when you already have customers, um, you know, uh, you're not there yet, you're not profitable, you're like, you, you're still quite struggling, but you already have customers, uh, making a decision to stop is extremely difficult because these people put their uh, sometimes their career or their uh, ambitions or their dreams into into this community, and so it's not like we're selling toothpaste where we stop selling toothpaste tomorrow, nobody cares. You know, the people are just going to go for another one. Uh, in our case, it was really about like uh, people and attention. So, so um, you know, uh, but Ahmed, I mean, you're you're in the front line uh, all day long. You you sense that too, right? The fact that it's really about people. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, clients will come to me with questions or concerns or whatever, and it's difficult to, you know, sometimes they'll come in super late in the day, and it's difficult to sign off because you feel like a, a real connection to them. Um, yeah, commitment. It's almost like we're we're essentially a community of communities. It's very yeah. meta in that way. Um, and yeah. like, so yeah, as John said, I work with our clients on a daily basis. I'm definitely like developed relationships with all of these community managers that are really, you know, putting their time and passion and effort you know, nights, weekends, really yeah. focusing on growing their community. Um, and so you, yeah. you really see the the passion that they put into it. Yeah, um, it's, it's not transactional. It's uh, it's more than that. So indeed, and, and you know that, so so many times we thought, you know, maybe we're not going to make it. It's too difficult. You know, five years of, of like of pain is, is, is tough, even though you're a great team and you're having fun. Uh, but again, like, uh, you know, uh, these, these people kept us going. And so, um, you know, as you know, like we're now in 2015, 2016, the industry is a lot more mature uh, already. Uh, we're getting more traction and customers start recommending us uh, very actively to, to others. So, so for us, that was the moment where, you know, like there was something happening really. Um, and, 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 you know, like here we are now. Um, I mean, again, don't, don't mean to talk too much about, about us, about Hybrite, uh, but, but just to give an idea, we're 
130 uh, people today, um, enthusiastic, talented people. We have, uh, I think, 50, more than 50 nationalities represented within our team, which is incredible um, and something we're, 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 we're proud of. It makes our days uh, very, very interesting with unique stories, um, unique perspectives. Um, we've got strong operations in the US, uh, in Europe, obviously, where we all started. Uh, we recently launched um, operations in, in, in Asia Pacific, in APAC. APAC. Uh, and when you look at things, I mean, France is, is less than 10% of our revenues to date. So we, 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 we feel we've really built something solid um, and, 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 you know, in collaboration with, with customers uh, who helped us shape the product to, to where it is today. Yeah. Um, you know, and. Um, yeah, I think having that diversity in terms of just even like within our own internal community or our internal company is important when you're, you know, dealing with all these different communities, you get just all those different kinds of perspectives and you can really help each community be the best they can be because we have so many people that are based around different parts of the world, different viewpoints, different experiences and whatnot. And I, I think that, totally. that translates well on totally. why we're where we are today. Totally. Yeah. Um, so I actually, I mentioned this before um, about how, you know, 10 years ago, obviously the landscape of the internet and social networks and, and online communities in general was very different. Uh, if you were founding Hivebright today, uh, September 1st, 2021, what would be different? Um, so I'd be 41, uh, <laughs> not, not 30 or 31, um, uh, uh, with an Italian wife and a seven month old baby in the next room and a plumber who is repairing a leak at the moment. In the kitchen, uh, but anyways, uh, no. I mean, I mean, yeah. It would, you know, <laughs> having a little family would make it difficult to have developers coming every day, you know, folding the bed and so on, like like we used to ten years ago. But uh, uh, more more seriously, um, and and I also got two shots of Pfizer in the meantime, so I'm I'm a different person now, uh, <laughs> more uh, resilient. Uh, no, but uh, the the entire innovation ecosystem is 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 a lot more mature globally, right? I mean, you have tons of tools and solution that we use uh you know to create a product uh that were not there uh, back then but also uh, in various places of the company right i mean there are lots more lot more solutions for for marketing for cs for sales a lot more data is available so it's a completely different world now uh you, you, you can do things much faster it's all you know we talked about that as well uh, just earlier but it's also a lot easier to raise capital um in general i mean i would sense i wouldn't say it's easy but 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 there is more money out there and, and more people understanding uh, this whole industry. And um, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, and, and, and obviously the market is growing fast as well. Uh, and, and most organizations and, 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 and people have understood the, 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 the value and why they should invest in online communities, which again, was not the case 10 years ago or even yeah. five years ago was, was coming, but it was. Yeah. Do you think it would be easier to start hybrid right now with all, I mean, you mentioned like there's all these technologies now and, and there's more venture capital and whatnot, but do you think it would be easier in terms of, you know, other technologies that are, uh, you know, competitors, I guess I should say. Uh, but do you think it would be easier in that sense? Or? No, it's a good point. I mean, it's it's more competitive for sure. It's more competitive, um, you know, but when it comes to uh, when it comes to starting the business, um, getting up and running, uh, like for sure, it, it's much, much easier, uh, you know, like and, and there are entire ecosystems and incubators and so on. Like dedicated to helping startups and so on. Again, like ten years ago, is uh, is not that long ago, but it's it's yeah. uh, it's a century in terms of innovation. So it really does does feel like a very long, very different time period. <laughs> um, all right, so I guess switching gears away from Hivebright specifically, and more so just our industry in general. Obviously, everyone here around the globe has been affected by COVID and the pandemic, which is still ongoing. Um, how has COVID impacted our industry? Great question. Never had it before. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Never. <heard> uh, <laughs> and I hope we won't have it uh, forever. But uh, no, no, no. I mean, the the, the pandemic uh, has obviously um, had a had a huge impact on our industry. Uh, everybody here in the audience knows that. Uh, we know it. Um, it, it. It had. I wouldn't say it had created a, a huge change. It just accelerated things. You know, like I, I'm thinking of people who are already uh using or, or running communities they probably made a more intensive use of, of, of communities during that period yeah. um thinking of people who were maybe considering launching a community they probably accelerated their decision and their plans and then there are people who had never considered um online communities who probably started to you know put the topic on the table so 
Um, things have accelerated uh, for sure. We probably uh, gain a, a bit of time in terms of, of, of you know, uh, maturation of the of the industry. I don't know if we can say that word, uh, maturation, maturity. Yeah, maturity. I think. <laughs> Speaking of your, your, obviously, you've been you know experiencing the industry for quite some time now and, and tracking trends and whatnot, um, and you know just dealing with the industry terminology, what do you think is the most overrated cliche about communities, if any? Um, no, no I'm, I'm thinking of one that has been that has been around for a while, and I think it's, it's, it's still there to some extent. It's the fact that, uh, I think it's coming from the fact that social media or social networks like Facebook and so on has been, has been around forever and was there first, but people, yeah. Uh, many people tend to uh, assess the success of their community based on the number of likes and posts and comments. Uh, and, 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 you know, like the, in, in the world of online communities, uh, some people just get started. Some are very professional, have launched a number of communities and really understand how it works. And, but, but there are people to, who are new to it. And, and, and yeah, they tend to look at these metrics, you know, the number of likes and so on to, to assess the success. While what we've noticed uh, over time is that there are many, many different types of communities, you know, like, like people, uh, communities are same, same, different, uh, you know, and the right metrics, uh, vary, uh, based on the goals and type of community. So, um, you know, they're trying to expand on this a bit, but, um, you know, there, the, the question is like, why are you starting this community, right? Some people, uh, start a community to, 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 to make sure like, they're going to raise money at the end of the day. So your metric, your success metric should be how much you raise through the community, right? Uh, some communities are about event attendance. Uh, you know, some communities are about uh, mentoring and, and, and you know, uh, or, or resource sharing, uh, content sharing, that kind of thing. So you have communities where, I mean, if you push it a bit, you could remove the, the, the feed, you know, the activity feed, and you may still have a very uh, successful community if people uh, consume your contents access your resources, you know, have one on one conversations that you will never see on the feed, you know, on the private messaging, access the directory to find each other, attend your events and give money at the end of the day, because you're raising money for whatever reason. I mean, you have a very successful community and you may not have a feed, you know, so so I mean, you see yeah. the point, right? I think th th there is a cliche, but it's it's it's, you know, it's uh, slowly fading and people um, uh, start to use much, much more metrics than, than this is. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's thankfully we've merged away from the times where everyone had a facebook page and it's like like us on facebook and then you'd end up liking a million pages on facebook and then you know it's just noise and you're not actually yeah. getting value from it yeah um, i'm actually i'm actually uh, active in some communities uh but i don't necessarily contribute a lot of content right i'm gonna attend event i'm gonna mentor some people i'm gonna i'm gonna you know like but i i do not necessarily um, publish posts uh so but but the community is still very successful in general so so on the positive side, I guess, to that end, what what's the best advice that you can give to a community manager in terms of, you know, measuring the success of the community and uh, yeah. making sure that their their customers or users, members are getting value out of it? Uh, I would say so. So um, I'm thinking of two things. The first one is, is I think you need four things to really uh, have a successful community. And I, I know many people here in the audience know that already, but uh, I would say uh, you need to make sure you identify very clear value uh, that you want to deliver to your end users, um, clear value that you want to to deliver to to the sponsors of the community, right? So if you have end users that are you know engaged and, and, and who find value, but the sponsor of the community is not seeing any any value out of it, maybe the community will you know stop at some point, you know, because of I mean I don't know like of resources, community management, and so on. So anyways. There needs to be clear value for the end users, clear value for the organization who's running the community, uh, quality in community management. And when I'm when I'm when I'm in, when I mean quality, I'm thinking of uh, you know the right balance, like like the right information to the right people, uh, a good editorial line, uh, you know, with interesting contents and stories. It doesn't have to be every day, but you know, every now and then, and also content that show the value of the community in general. Um, uh, and, and, and another thing, obviously, that you need is, is good technology if you want to scale uh, your, your effort and your impact, right? So, yeah. so, so that would be the first advice. If you're missing one of these, uh, it's not going to work well, uh, right? If there is no value, I mean, you can do whatever you want. 
uh, we all know that if the community management is not is not good unless you have a, a very strong um, you know organic uh, you know activity it may be tough uh, and then if you don't have technology sometimes it's it, it's a bit tough so so and, and the other thing I was thinking of is um, is that you gotta you gotta build things progressively right um, I, I like when people are able to say we're gonna launch this community and we're gonna really focus on two or three things uh, very clearly uh, stated. Uh, and we're not gonna flood people with tons of contents and feature all over the place, right? I mean, so yeah. so, so be selective in how you want to start and and build on that. Actually, the community may come to you and ask for more, and and if you have the features in store, you just activate them, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, especially if it's a community that's just starting out, I think it's really important to have like kind of laser focus on just maybe a few features or a few um, modules, so to speak, of you know ways that users can interact with the community. And then as the community grows and more people are engaging, then you kind of open up those other lanes for people to, to fill. Totally, yeah. Um, so we've talked a lot about the past and how we've come to this point. What are you the most excited about for the future of online communities in general? Um, so so I, when, I, when I look back, um, you know, we started with the idea that we would create a solution that would help people um you know share opportunities more easily right and 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 really tap into their network in a very structured manner and and when i look at the customers we have now i'm i'm thinking it's 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 pretty amazing how online communities are 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 a powerful catalyst for change basically like it's 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 you know like i'm thinking of customers i, I can mention a few of them but um you know i i feel like online communities are a strong enabler and a strong really accelerator or catalyst or whatever you call it for for change and we all know that we need change we want we, we need to change things faster and and i see how online communities are, are are doing this so that really to me is is super exciting because it gives me the feeling that we're part of it right we're part of that effort and that change and so again it was not necessarily what we wanted to do in the future in, in in the beginning but this is what we want to do now actually we want to do it more and 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 enable more change so i'm thinking of customers like uh, uh girl up so i don't know if if, if if you guys know girl up um it was founded by the the un foundation and and they focus on empowering um adolescent girls and po positioning them um you know to be change makers in their communities uh for gender equality for social change um and and so that's in my opinion an amazing community i mean my my wife is a is a feminist um i i got you know uh educated on all these topics and so on and i i i'm very proud to to be working with girl up uh we have neo home as well uh neo home is a totally different field it's sustainability and they connect trail tra trailblazers uh, with experts um, in, in all aspects of sustainability. I mean, sustainability is a, is a, is a, is a wide world. Like, it's, it's huge, it's complex. Uh, there's new innovation and new assumptions that are made like every, every other day. Uh, and so these guys actually centralize knowledge as much as they can and experience um, at, in order to tackle complex uh, uh, strategic sustainability challenges. And, and then there is this other community that we, we, we've been working with as well. Actually, uh, they will be on a, on, a, on a webinar tomorrow, on a session tomorrow, on a keynote uh, at, uh, at 4.30 uh, Eastern time, if, if I recall correctly. Um, and they will explain how they leverage their community to respond to COVID. Um, so it's, it's pretty interesting. Like these guys empower uh, immu immun immunization professionals worldwide. So, I mean, Back to back to your question. Sorry, it was a long answer, but oh, it's great. Uh, that's exciting. I mean, we're basically working with that th these communities that change the world. Uh, and I know it sounds cliche, but I mean that's really what excites us in general. Uh, I feel and, and excites the people who who join us uh, these days. Yeah, I mean, did you think when you were starting Hive Bright, you know, ten years ago, that you'd be helping a community that's currently trying to end a global pandemic? I mean, that sounds <laughs> like I don't think anyone could have predicted that. No, no, no. It's 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 very pleasant to to think about it. Of course, they, they the merit is 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 all theirs. Uh, that's for sure. But it's it's yeah. super pleasant to be able to talk to friends and family and say, hey, uh, we're part of this to some extent, right? I mean, it's uh, yeah. so so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Really cool. Um, all right. Well, that's all the questions that I had for you. But I think we have just a few minutes for some quick audience questions. Sure. Um, so we've got a few here. Let's start with a question from Brian. 
Um, what are some tips that you can offer to help drive engagement on the HiveRight platform uh, when members' attention can be so splintered? When the? When the members' attention, it's like attention oh. for things can be so splintered. Um, you know, yeah. there's a bunch of different, there's a lot of noise coming from everywhere else. How do you, you know, drive engagement specifically on the high play platform? No, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge that everybody has, right? I mean, you want to get attention as much as you can from everybody. Uh, my feeling is that you, it needs to be all about quality, right? I mean, you, 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 you shouldn't be noisy. You should really deliver quality. And so ask yourself and even ask people what they expect, right? From, from the community in terms of content, in terms of resources. If you're clear about that, then you, you you adjust your editorial line and 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 you know and find the right channels to 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 broadcast that information. But um, I would be tempted to say that in general, I mean, if you deliver value, uh, people will will see that they will come, and so you need to focus on the quality uh, of what you're doing as opposed to quantity. And so I mean, quantity is 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 fine, of course. Like we we know that you know you still need to to make a bit of noise, but. Uh, um, we know that it can be counterproductive to to over um, you know email or or people. So yeah, you don't want to you don't want to bug people too much. Exactly. Uh, so another quick question from Veronique: um, How do you lead and motivate your community management team remotely? Um, and if I might just real quick before you answer this, um, as I was saying before, that we're almost like a community of communities. So it's like we're almost already doing the same. I say we, me specifically, you know, helping all these other communities. I'm almost doing the same job as like managing yeah. community managers that are, you know, obviously we're all remote. Um, so it's, it, I'm interesting to, interested to see what you have to say about this, what your answer is here. I mean, I'm going to be humble on that one. I've never thought about this, so I don't have a, a, a probably a great uh, thought through answer, but I'm tempted to say that uh, you know, it, it makes me think of volunteer management. We have lots of communities that are about, uh, you know, uh, helping volunteers coordinate their action uh, to make an impact. And I feel like the other question is kind of this, right? I mean, you have people managing some communities, and and you wanna you wanna you want them to impact and 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 motivate them. So I feel it's about targets, uh, a leaderboard, uh, maybe to 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 see how people are doing, uh, maybe drive a little sense of competition uh co-creation um you know that's that's the way i would go about it but again veronique i mean i i, I don't know the context uh, enough and i would be uh, very happy to to take it offline and and have a chat uh later cool and then one last uh quick question what is the future from a technology standpoint wow curveball I don't know. Uh, from a technology standpoint, I, a few a few things come to mind. Uh, yeah, the the first one is uh, is is, is pretty <laughs> cool. I feel, <laughs> yeah, I feel people uh, want to to have more and more control, right? I mean, if you look at uh, community solutions, community management and engagement solutions ten years ago, they were pretty basic, and and now uh, as people as the market mature, as people are going one level deeper and so on, they want more control, whether it's visual control or functional control or sometimes technical control with the ability to integrate and and, and embed uh, their community system in other platforms and that kind of thing. So control is one thing. Um, the second thing that comes to mind is uh, automation. Uh, I, I, I tend to think that people want to focus more on uh, you know, like uh, boosting the community with real value uh, for the for the end users, as opposed to some back office boring administrative stuff, right? So, so if we automate things uh, well for them in the back office and allow them to set up rules and 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 that kind of thing, then uh, we make their life a lot easier and we allow them to focus on value creation. Uh, and uh, and 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 one of the things that comes to mind is the mobile accessibility. Uh, we have lots of customers in various regions of the world. Uh, and sometimes uh, some 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 developing regions where the chain needs to be uh, the fastest or, or the deepest, uh, and these guys can only connect through mobile. So if you've got a community uh, there and 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 it's not mobile ready, I mean uh, you're going to struggle. So that's that's a real focus that everybody needs to have, uh, in my opinion, in in our world. No, that was great. Perfect, perfect way to end the nice curveball question at the end there. Um, so unfortunately, that is our time for today. But thank you again for everyone that has joined and attended um, and asked you great questions. If we didn't get to yours, I know there was a few that we didn't get to. Um, we'll make sure to follow up offline. 
Um, but if you'd like to learn more about High Fright, please check out highfright.com or drop a line in our booth at CMX. And we look forward to hearing more about your community challenges and goals. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.